Hey everyone and welcome back to episode 5 of the perfect single player storage. I usually like to start these episodes off with a little trip back in time to explore some of the changes I've made on some of the modules that we worked on in previous episodes. Today I want to start things off a little bit differently with a somewhat of a disclaimer or public service announcement. Either way you can decide what it's called yourself. And uh, that's actually regarding uh, titles of YouTube videos. As I just mentioned in the beginning of this video and that shows quite clearly on the title, this is called the perfect single player storage. If you've been keeping up with the series, you'll notice on episode one, I quite openly outlined the objective of the perfect single player storage. The perfect single player storage is more of a subjective look at uh, ideas and redstone that I made myself to design the perfect single player storage aimed at me. The idea was to look through archives of things that already exist in tech Minecraft or storage tech Minecraft should I say and kind of build on ideas on things that I think really well fit me and almost as a thought experiment for you guys too to kind of explore what you think would work really well for you. Unfortunately some things like storage is really subjective and uh, what may work for me doesn't necessarily work for everyone else which is why it's nice to have a kind of like a collection of ideas and a part of this series was to kind of throw things out there that kind of made you think about what you would want to do. Obviously the perfect single player storage for some people can be a wall of chests that have some item frames on them uh, with a whole bunch of stuff dumped in them manually. Uh, all the way up to really complicated systems which use box sorting and item splitters and all that kind of stuff. It really just depends on the user or the server, whoever it is that's building the storage themselves. Quite often you see on YouTube, not just in tech Minecraft or in storage tech, but in all sorts of uh, YouTube videos, people use words such as best or amazing or even words like ultimate. Unfortunately, people are really duped into, you know, believing designs and building things that don't necessarily work as intended or just generally are subjectively the best or amazing or even really just an outright lie. In most cases, those things are not true at all. I've been seeing this a lot recently on YouTube or in within the tech community, and I just thought it was something to highlight a little bit on myself, and I wanted to make sure people understood what I also meant by perfect. Please also don't take everything that I say as gospel. Even if I think something's good or uh, I, I present it as the best idea, Again, it is subjective to me, but feel free to do your own research. There are plenty of archives. Like I mentioned, the Storage Tech Discord has loads of information on uh, a bunch of stuff. And that goes also for builds. Just because I build something, I look at it as, as the best version because it was what I was setting out to do. And that's the objective that I had. And I wanted to build the thing the way that I built it. It isn't necessarily the best version of it. Feel free to check out all the discords that are linked in the description down below and make your decisions yourself. Sorry for the downer of an intro, just something I felt like I had to get off my chest. Anyway, let's take that trip back in time and look at where we left off last time. So we'll start our first trip back in time with the interface system that we looked at last time. Um, appreciate some of the feedback. Some people really enjoyed the little shame bell system. I thought it was quite funny. I, like I said, I had way too much fun making it. It was kind of sad, but I'm glad that you guys at least enjoyed it. It made me feel less lame. But um, one of the things that I wanted to touch on was the actual interface. Towards the end of the episode, I mentioned that I had... Um, Simplified things quite a bit thanks to some of the information that I found on uh, TechMC and on the Storage Tech Discord and I made some changes to make the whole thing a little simpler. Now after actually having made the video, I'm one of those people who gets a little bit obsessive with things that don't necessarily matter. In most cases you could just say that this was good enough and continue on with your life. I unfortunately am, uh, like I mentioned, a bit obsessive, so I decided that I'm going to do a little bit more work in terms of perfecting the system to my standards a little bit. So I took a little look at what I did and kind of readjusted things. Actually got rid of a couple components, completely got rid of the dust, uh, even though it's not flashing, it wasn't necessary. I honestly, sometimes I just like dustless because I think dust looks pretty ugly. And uh, I, like I said, I also got rid of some components here. So with very minimal look here, we're functioning uh, exactly the same as we did on that one. Thanks to our good old friend, Honey and Slime. I know the tech the MC has a bit of a weird thing with Honey and Slime nowadays. Or they, I think they kind of did before and it, everyone's kind of coming towards being okay with it again. It doesn't look great, but in terms of functionality, it adds a ridiculous amount and really makes things look, if not, if you don't like the look of Honey and Slime, it definitely cleans things up quite a bit. So this was the uh, kind of the, the remodel of the situation that i done here. And you can see all like the buffers and stuff and whatnot. Everything was looking good, but I realized there's still a bunch of stuff that I need to add to this. So 
I took a little look at this also and thought there's things that need to be changed and arranged and also I don't like the idea of using water at the moment because number one glow squids which I actually found out recently are going to be um spawn proofable in the new in the new snapshots and whatnot so it won't actually be a big issue when it comes to building this thing but i don't like generally using water because spillage and then things get messy and i you know i just i'm not a huge fan of water columns if i'm totally honest with you where i don't have to use them in some cases they are a necessity so you do and we'll get back to the um upgrade of the system a little bit later on when we look through the layout of the new storage system so just for now, I thought I'd show the st step one in the progression that kind of pushed me towards making the full changes. The other thing was regarding the original slice that I was using for the box displays. Now, at first glance, it does still look exactly the same as the previous versions. Unfortunately, I had to make a few changes to it, but fortunately, it's because I got a little bit of information from Storage Tech Genius uh, Command Leo, which if you know about Storage Tech, you probably know of. Um, he makes a lot of the contraptions, funnily enough, made the little thingy majiggy at the bottom over there that splits the shulker boxes and items up. Um, when you watch the video, he the original layout for this was that the sticky piston was here and the observer was here. And he mentioned that if you activated both slices within five game ticks of each other, you would activate the first slice twice, which is actually a, somewhat of an issue. And um he mentioned that there was a couple fixes for it and the one that i actually found that would be useful was just moving the piss sticky piston down and again using our lord and savior honey and slime combos to fix the issue here that way um i don't have to worry about these sticky pistons doubling up on on pulses and it now gets rid of the issue now what i did in the same time was because i was looking at hopper locking adding a uh, an extra line here which is uh this whole thing you think is like two blocks bigger in the previous version was because there was like a buffer situation um where i had a second hopper here to pull out boxes that came through the system here so if i quickly demonstrate the uh system here uh, actually this is not a good uh this is not a good example because the button press is different uh function slightly differently so if i put in some items into the box here and it breaks the box naturally we are unfortunately going to get the item now held in the hopper which is why there was a second hopper here before it was to suck out the item blah 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 hopper locking became an issue it then became too big and way more convoluted for me to do so what i'll do now is assume that i always have all my items in the box here if i'm ever empty i can now hit the button and just eject the final box that comes out there. In addition to that, unfortunately, you do get a second empty box. Again, no big deal for me. I'll just deal with the empty box by putting it back into the uh, buffer, the choker box buffer that I will eventually have for the system. So no big deal with that. And the reason why the button press actually allows the item to go through is because it unlocks the system considerably longer than the detection system does, which is why the button will bring the boxes all down. The uh, detection system when the box is full will not. Hopper locking actually became a lot easier in the system too, you can see from this. And um, I actually just now need to power one line for this whole thing. And that would be from this input here. So this will be, as you can see, from the uh, new data pack I'm using, which is actually pretty amazing data pack, which allows you, excuse me, to see hop uh, locked hoppers and whatnot. So in the system currently, as it stands when it's idle, it will always be locked with pretty much everything except for these two hoppers here, which I can lock through global locking on this system right here. So simple systems become actually a little bit more simpler with a slightly removed feature, but also added feature of um, having it be a little bit more simple. Also one really random thing, which is the button presses before used to happen on the redstone to, uh, lamp before, which means that when you would activate this redstone lamp here, it would activate the lamp next to it. Now we've moved that forward based on how the new layout is. So ac the activation of the redstone lamp is based on the actual slice itself now. Not a huge upgrade or change or something worth noting. I just thought it was nice to have in the new version. The next thing I want to explore in this episode is going to be what we're going to be doing with our items that aren't going to be kept in box storage like the one on the slices on the left here. So things that aren't going to be naturally packed into shulker boxes and instead things that will be packed into double chests instead. Now I've accumulated a couple things from the storage check discord which I think are going to be useful for us to explore and understand and then potentially make a decision on. Uh, spoiler alert, I already made the decision because I'm making this video a little bit after but let's explore them anyway just for fun. So in front of me here, we have the three design choices, which I picked as the best options of what I would potentially want to build in my storage system. Now, if we have a look at them, they all have their own nice values and, and kind of things they bring to the table. So let's run through some of them and see what the best one here is. My first choice here was this system here by, I believe, also Command Leo. 
Um, uh, this is a system that uses five chests per slice, which is super nice. You have the ability to um, keep a, a lot more storage per slice, two, two items actually per slice than usual chest storage. Um, it's a lot nicer to take into consideration. I really prefer having a denser storage than a larger storage, in my opinion. It makes it easier to navigate around. However, this had the slight disadvantage of not having full hopper locking. It's mostly hopper locked, as you can see from the red hoppers. You do, however, see quite a few non-red hoppers. What color is this? What are we going to consider this? We're going to call this beige. These beige hoppers here are the ones that are unlocked. They're not actually even lockable through uh, global locking. Maybe there's a way that you could have done so. I don't know. I imagine if there was a uh, possibility, Command Leo probably would have taken care of that himself. But, you know, it, taking into consideration how much time I've put into having hopper locking along with global hopper locking and blah, blah, blah. It feels a little bit weird to say that I'm going to sacrifice it for slices, especially considering there's probably going to be a few of them at least. So... This was a nice system, but I think we're going to go ahead and put that to the side. This system here is by Acacia Chan and Fallen Breath, uh, members of the TIS server. Uh, this is also a really cool system. It, um, In most cases, the biggest advantage in this system here is the layout. If you come inside of here, things are really nicely placed for you, really easily accessible. In terms of selectability and, and usability, the system here is really nice. I really enjoyed the way that the, the things are laid out here. They do make things a lot nicer for when you're actually going to be playing in survival. However, as you can see by the wiring, this has two disadvantages. Number one, this is AB tileable, which means it's not a repeating pattern. They actually change per slice. So this will be the first slice, the second slice. And then obviously this repeats onwards as the build goes on. Now, it's not a huge problem in terms of building. It is, however, a huge disadvantage for me just because it requires so much changing in between. Slices become blurry. One of the best things about building a slice that's repeatable is that it becomes it becomes rememberable. So if you miss something, generally you'll look back on the previous slices and remember it a lot easier. It's not a huge problem, but it is still a bit of a problem. The biggest problem with this, unfortunately, is pre-filling. Now, I'm going to try and see if I can remember to put something on screen here to show you the pre-fill layout. It is incredibly annoying to do. Pre-filling is one of the worst. One of the things that I don't want to do when I'm setting up a storage system. I do agree that some people will say that it's a one-time thing and then not something you have to worry about. However, when you consider expandability in the future, it's going to be something I do have to reconsider at some point in my time. So I'm not really too interested in the system. I had a little look further and then found there was the system, uh, the Thanos of systems, if you will, the one that trumps all of them. And um, that will be this system up here on the top. You might notice that the grey concrete use here is um, is indicative of this one down there and the emerald blocks this again is a, a system by Command Leo. If you have a close look at the system here you will notice that there is quite a few open uh, hoppers here. Like these ones, this one here, this one here, so on and so on. This system however does have access to global locking to make it completely hopper locked which is really nice. Um, you can see the redstone lines on this system here that lock these hoppers. So on, I won't show you every bit of hopper locking availability here. It is, however, fully hopper, lock hopper lockable. Oh god, this is all becoming a weird word So It is fully hopper, hopper lockable and therefore was the system that I chose to go with. More importantly than being 100% hopper lockable was the fact that they required no pre-filling. Which means that all of the filters, like these ones here, use standard item filters. Which means, in most cases... You'll just be using the system like you normally do for any other item filter. Even the ones that don't look like normal item filters are indeed normal item filters and don't require any extra pre-filling, pre which honestly is the reason for it to be the MVP right there. And more so than that, the layout of this isn't terrible. In fact, now that I'm looking at it, it's pretty close to the one by Fallen Breath and Acacia Chan. Um, the best thing about this actually for me is that it's three wide. Um, I do like a little bit of walking space. The one down here was a wee bit awkward. I know it does have three wide spaces. It's just the way it's intended to be used with the stairs here means that it's accessible because if you put a block here, it's less accessible if you're walking down it but whatever the other one worked out a lot nicer for me so i decided you know what this is what we're going to build the unfortunate part my friends is this is where the journey stops becoming simple and i use the word simple relatively because making individual contraptions or designing little things is generally quite easy you can do i can do a lot of them within my spare time i can do a lot of them sometimes at work don't tell my boss 
And uh, a lot of the times it's one of those things that you can kind of squeeze in. But this is where things become a lot more thought heavy. And uh, they take a lot more consideration because they're going to be something that you build. Sometimes you might invest a lot of time into building it and it ends up being something that you're going to end up regretting in the long term. So this is where things become a little bit questionable. This is where we now go into layouts. Layouts are the most important part for me because they're going to determine uh, a bunch of things. Now, in full disclosure, I made a, a whole, I did a whole segment of things which I didn't record. So we're going to just cut to what is essentially the somewhat, maybe version one, maybe even, you know, the final version of what the layout's going to be like. Let's go and check that out. This is layout number one. And I say layout number one because as you can see, it's relatively bare at the moment and it doesn't look necessarily how it's going to end up looking but let's just say that this is ultimately going to be the first idea of how things are going to work now as you can tell it's a very standard layout you have the chest tools you have the box displays blah 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 pretty straightforward i want to go have a look at the chest tools however because this was the most important part and this is actually the part that i never ended up putting into the video or never ended up recording and that was to make, that was the choices that I made with the block layout. As you can see here, everything is really nicely laid out into somewhat logical form, which I didn't actually end up explaining or haven't ended up uh, explaining because it made more sense as I was making the choices themselves. And again, I never recorded them. But when you have a general look at it, you can see how things flow. Everything that generally contains a stair is within this top aisle over here. The things... That I, the one thing I probably would explain to you here is um, how things changed in item form. So you can see things that had multiple blocks took up uh, slices first. As things go down, things don't necessarily have multiple blocks for them. For example, a dark prismarine here doesn't have walls. So anything uh, beyond that doesn't have walls will now continue in this slice here, for uh, you know, for example. Um, but I've just kept that for here. You can see that changes over here, but that's when we change kind of like the block palette of what kind of um, blocks that we have here. So that changes and each section kind of carries that theme over, more so visible on something like this. And you can see um, in this case, where it comes to something like oak, oak had multiple things. So things that I actually wanted to archive or store um, are now in uh, this whole thing. So everything oak related that I want to keep is in here. And then same for spruce and, and all the other wood types. So you can see when you just look at wood from this section here, everything that I wanted to store, again, I wanted, there is still some other wood items which are pretty useless that I didn't put in. These are all located here, for example. You then have all your uh, standard stone, andesite, blah, blah, blah types here. Those are all filled here. Any extra sections like you can see here, this uh, mossy cobble is the only one that had stairs, slabs, walls, and a full block. Um, everything else in this section here was just taken up by extras that I've just, just kind of made a slight choice on, I guess. In this section here, we have all of the, um, I forget what these are called, deep slate variants. You also have all of the uh, blackstone variants here as well and their uh, corresponding blocks. These are all things that actually had items for it. We've also got all of the quartz stuff in this section here. And as we move on, you start to see the line get blurry. And this is where things started to mishmash a little bit. Now, this little section beyond the walls and stairs are, are blocks that either didn't have a home naturally or were just things that were left over that just seemed like they fit in the empty sections of the halls that I made. So these are the sections here have uh, a bunch of random stuff. If you watched the previous episode, you'll see some of these blocks here. In fact, you actually see some blocks missing, which um, long story short was decisions I made that just I thought, I didn't want to store those things at the end of it and I knew that this would happen throughout the series where my ideas on what I did and didn't want to store would change and uh, for those reasons they didn't make it into here but yeah like I said the, the last section here is kind of a mishmash of stuff but it all kind of makes sense to me. Turning around and looking deeper down the hall you'll see here that we have the hall of colours so we have all the terracotta colours, uh, glazed, you know powders, glass, blah blah blah, carpet, all the good stuff. And one of the things you'll notice here is that these halls are a little bit smaller. Um, these halls can extend to 16 or 15 blocks, if I remember correctly, because of hopper locking and signal strength. And I split these up into eights instead because it was one block short. And instead of having one long hall, these are now in two separate halls. No big deal. Uh, it doesn't make a difference to me. It makes the hall one block longer. But in terms of symmetry and making things a little bit even, I liked it this way instead of having all of the colors up until one point and then having a split and then having the final color here, which actually reminds me I've done this wrong. 
much better. And again, you also see a slight um, uh, theme here with all the dyes and stuff at the top uh, that carries on through with the corresponding colors. The colors all match up with the same lanes. You know, no rocket science is done here. Pretty straightforward stuff. The other thing you will see at the top here is like another random mishmash of things. Now, the reason for these is mainly because these slices didn't really have anything for them. I could have chosen the flower colors to go on top here instead. Turns out I don't really care that much about flowers. Again, I, as I'm speaking, I just realized that I made a mistake here because I do care somewhat about flowers um, as I've been using them recently. So maybe that will change again. Um, and the reason I originally done this was because I ran out of space. So I think I thought whatever items I've got left over, I'll stick them at the top here. And then I had four remaining spots. But as of recent, I decided that I was going to extend the hall naturally anyway. So why not just pre-plan for things that will eventually be added into the system when updates come around? So I did that already. And so what I might actually do now is change all of these items into slots to reserve on this section here. And instead put all of the flowers back on top of, uh, in these sections here instead. The, ch the shulker box halls have now been adjusted to the new system or the new layout that I showed you guys earlier. And uh, I don't have any, I don't have the exemplatory slices available. So these are all just sticky pistons at the moment. Um, and the reason I don't have any at the moment was because um, I actually changed, when I changed it, I didn't put the new block examples down. What you will notice, in fact, over here, one of the things that I'm going to do that I didn't initially want to do was pre, um, uh, pre set like slices that aren't going to be assigned so what i will be doing here is basically just walling this off for now and um this will make future expandability a, a, a little bit easier and and something that i don't have to consider too much um so yeah that will just be blocked off and then when i do decide if and when i do decide to expand the storage system with more items i'll have these slots available here i've also done the exact same thing on uh, this side here as well same thing left a couple extra slots I pre-planned for it. This should actually keep me going. I, I would predict until past 1.19 if I'm not being overzealous with that thought. Um, but I would say 1.19 at least should it should carry me over until that time. The last thing that I added in here, and this is probably not something to mention in this video because it doesn't necessarily make sense, was this little box loading system here for when you're in these storages. I might add these into every ridge that we have available because it's easy. And the idea behind these obviously oops, apologies, is what you just saw there. That triggered twice because I put a block in front of it. But it would just be, you know, if I'm doing a project, grab a couple things, break the boxes, give me the box, on my way I go. It makes um, planning for stuff a little bit easier. Originally, I had this uh, set in the roof, and it took it to a central storage. I changed my mind on that, may change it back again. Just thought this was the cool little thing that stays in the slice that didn't actually um, interfere with any of the redstone in the back and uh, you can see here it's relatively compact i tried doing a couple other things with it couldn't be bothered tried hopper locking it too seemed excessive for like three unlocked hoppers at all times so as it stands this is what we have i think really the only other thing worth mentioning is going to be the waterways which i've already kind of messed with to get a, a good idea of how i want things to flow uh, they will be starting on that section over there making their ways through and um, they will start off on, on the box storage on this side here and then they'll cascade through the um, the chest storages as you see through this. The layout is about as good and compact as I could get it coming through here. We've used some sea pickles uh, on this side to align the items that's kept things nice and tucked away. Uh, around the back here so everything on in terms of like water flow and actually flow of design uh for the items is is pretty much done and, and was relatively straightforward if i'm honest uh, aligning things wasn't as hard as i thought it would be the more daunting task i had was the waterways itself and considering that i've done most of that already it seems like I felt like I've got most of the hard work out of the way, considering I don't really change too much about it. But one of the ideas of this situation is to get a little bit of feedback from you guys and hear if there's anything that you have that you think might make the system a little bit better. Now, I think one of the things that is clearly obvious from this layout here is going to be where do the peripherals go? You know, things like the crafting stations and the smelter system and the uh, brewing system, all of these things that I mentioned that would be a part of the system at some point. The idea generally here is to have the, a second floor on, on the storage system. This may or may not end up being a good or bad idea. I don't really know yet. I have to mess around with it a little bit to get a better understanding. But from what I've gathered from uh, my little thought that I've put into this, it should work relatively well. 
and I'll have a good way of transporting items to the second floor to either be smelted, crafted, um, what well, I guess brewing doesn't necessarily require that effort anyway. But there'll be a second floor where it should be, I should be able to make things relatively easy to transport items uh, from any part of the storage to the bottom floor anyway. But again, I really do appreciate any feedback that you guys have. If you think there's anything that I'm missing here, anything that you think I should add, please do let me know in the comment section down below or hit me up in Discord. Either way, I'm cool with that. The last thing that I wanted to potentially go through was the uh, interface panel that I'm working with here. I took a lot of inspiration from Experimental Idea on the panel that he had. He gave me some really good ideas of what I would want uh, to actually have on the system. However, I think that this probably warrants its own video. There's a couple choices in there that I think would be nicely broken down and uh, dissected a little bit more because there's actually some stuff on there that I probably want uh, you guys to idiot check for me. So I don't think I'm going to do uh, that on this video. And instead, I think I'll make a slightly shorter video, maybe like a five minute video breaking down the, uh, the, uh, the interface system. Uh, that way I can kind of separate the, the feedback and stuff a little bit better. And I think I can, it will just be a little bit more digestible. I might end up spending another 10 minutes just talking about the interface here. So I think I'll leave that for another one that I'll probably release a lot sooner than the video following that one. I am planning on wrapping up the series relatively soon. Although I think I said that the last episode and I said maybe there's two more episodes left and I've already included this episode and the one that I'm probably going to do on the interface behind me. And maybe that isn't <laughs> necessarily true um, because I still have a final design video and then a breakdown of the peripherals video. So... Hmm. maybe I lied who knows let's see how it goes and I think I'll end the video right there thanks again for watching like subscribe you know, comment blah, 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 blah.